Hello everyone and welcome to a little mini series, a mini tutorial series that is going to be all about the Batania mod, which is a mod about growing special flowers to generate mana that you then collect in a pool, which you then use to power other flowers who can do cool things for you like change building blocks into something more interesting and useful, kill off any mobs in the area so they're not infesting your base, and even convert stone into something more useful, like for example a nice bit of ore. Ooh, lapis! But that is just the beginning. Batania is a reasonably large mod, there are lots of things that it can do, flowers are just kind of like the be-all and end-all of it. And I am playing on the 1.20.1 edition, which as of this moment is the latest release, and it's easily available if you wanted to play along too by going over to the CurseForge website. But without further ado, let's get started. So this is where I have spawned in, and I can already see that around here there are a few bits and pieces that look like they are not from vanilla Minecraft. And this is where the Batania journey begins. You'll find scattered throughout the world are 16 different colours of flowers, just like this one here. These are the pink ones, as you can see. They come in either the standard variety or the too tall variety, both of which can be knocked down just by punching them as per usual. And I think I saw, yeah, there's some green ones over here as well. And the first thing you're going to want to do is pick up as many of these as you possibly come across. So I'm going to have a little run around this area and see how many other flowers I can find. At the moment, ooh, there's definitely a pale blue one just over there. And then I'll see about getting started with a little bit of a starter base. And there's another portal as well. Ooh, it seems like a nice area. But I will get a little bit more established and I'll come back to you in just a mo. And if you're having any difficulty deciding whether or not it is a Batania flower or not, these ones all look kind of similar around here. The Batania one is the one that is glowing. It's got these little kind of wiggly particles coming off it to show it is effectively a magical flower. Get off it. You walk on that. I'll collect you though and see what others I can find. Okay, so in just the quick time I've been running around here, I have managed to find uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different colours of flowers. That is plenty to get us started, and you only really need one of each colour as well, because we're able to sort of grow new flowers from petals a little bit later on as well. But I seem to have completely neglected watching the time. It is now getting dark. I can't run anywhere. I think I'm going to go and dig myself into a hole and spend the night there. Yay! So, while I'm stuck in this one by two hole waiting for the night to pass, I will explain about the flowers. Now, it's not actually the flowers itself that we're interested in. Each one of these, whether it's the two tall or the single variety, can be broken down into its petals, and it's the petals that we're going to be using in any recipes. So if I break down this lime flower, it gives me two lime petals. If I break down the tall one, then it gives me four lime petals. They all stack together, there's no difference between the two if you use the two tall or the single tall varieties. Each of these flowers also has a mushroom counterpart as well. So there's me in my coward hole while I wait out the night, but if we take a little look underground, what we will find is that mushrooms are spawning down in the deepest, darkest recesses of the world. If we come down here, yeah, I thought I spotted some. There's some, so we've got a green, an orange, and a blue. And these work in exactly the same way as the flowers do. Just if you're living underground, it's another way of getting hold of the different colours. There's a little red one, there's a little pink one. Hopefully now, though, daylight has sprung. Ah, oh, yes, a glorious morning. Right, time to make a starter base. Whee. Without looking at you. Okay, so we're starting to look a little bit more established around here. What I've done is I've popped all of the flowers out in the front garden so that we can keep track of those and know how many we've got. And there's quite a few where I've only got one, the other one sort of knocking around. I've only got the two tall. So we need to make some more flowers. And we can do that just using simple bone meal. So what I'll do is I'll come over to this little flower just here and I'll pick this light blue one. I can then break this down into petals, just like that, and then I can plant these petals into the soil as if they were some kind of seed. And you'll find when you do that, you get these sort of little sparkly particles over the top of it, and when you bone meal it, boop, 
you get a nice two tall flower just there to use. Now you do that one again. And now, because we can take these petals from these two talls, and remember that in this case we actually get four petals, we can very quickly multiply the number of flowers that we have got. And just to point out, so long as you've got a bit more bone meal on you, you can just bone meal the single flowers as well, and they will automatically grow into the two tall variety. So getting petals is really easy once you've got the flowers, and then you can just plant them to get more flowers, and so on infinitum, until you've got more flowers than you know what to do with. Oh, 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 there we go. And, oh, you in there? <laughs> Full complement of lime green flowers. But what about the colours that we haven't got? What if we can't find those out in the world? Well, luckily, Batania's going to help us with that as well. So if I just take this light blue flower, we'll break that one down again into its petals. And then we can break the petals down further to make dyes. This is a really easy way to get all of the different colours of dyes. Then I need a crafting bench. There should be one in the house somewhere. You will do. And what we can do is we can add the dyes to bone meal. So you need one bone meal and then you need four dyes of any colour and you will get this. You will get some floral fertiliser. And what that does is it's going to allow us to go outside again, find a nice bare patch of soil or grass or anything which would be able to grow flowers on. Here we'll do. And if we then use that as if we were bone mealing and we'll see what colours we got. That will automatically grow the mystical flowers for you, but the ones that it grows is completely random. So in this case, I've got another dark grey, I've already got that colour. I've got a green, I've already got that colour, but aha, uh -huh, I have got a cyan, that's a colour that I was short of. And so by repeatedly going through the process of adding our bone meal to our dyes, it doesn't have to all be the same dye by the way. So there you go, there's a light blue one in there with some limes and it'll still make floral fertiliser for me. I'll stick you in there and I'll get a few more of them. But by doing this repeatedly, we should be able to slowly build up until we've got all of the different colours of flowers. Ah, there's the blue one. And before you know it, you will have the full complement of all of the different flower colours. And the nice thing is, because they're so easy to make more of, as soon as you've got them, you'll never need to go out hunting for them again. But these certainly are some numerous flowers. What with having the one tall variety and the two tall variety, and having all 16 colours in all of them, that is an awful lot of flowers. And we're going to need a way to store all these if we want to keep them in our inventory. And luckily, that's not exactly challenging. What we can do is I come back in here, I should be able to get hold of some wool, so I'm gonna need five pieces of wool, and then I'm going to need a petal of some description. Any color will do, you will do nicely, little lime petal. And what we can do though is we can combine these and make ourselves a pouch for keeping flowers in. There we go, so there's your little recipe just to create yourself a flower pouch come to me and what we can do with this if you have it in your right hand and then you right click anywhere in space you'll bring up its inventory and here we can see it's got all of the different flowers laid out so here are all of your one tall variety and here are all of your two tall variety and it allows you to store a stack of all of them in this one little pouch so if you're out mucking about in the world somewhere and you find some flowers you think oh i wouldn't mind keeping hold of that one what you can do then is you can pop that into your pouch. When you open it up, there we go, it's already in there. And once you've kind of activated the pouch, you'll find that it'll start picking them up automatically. So there you go, it now knows it needs to hold brown flowers and yellow flowers. So if I pick it up another yellow one, it's gone in automatically, including the two tall. So I pick up all of these, there you go, why not? And there they all are stacking up in there nicely. And it's an easy way to keep hold of them all without having to keep on going into your inventory and they're all clogging everything up. To get them out of the pouch, again, just open up its little inventory and then you can bring them out one at a time or individually. However, it just acts like a normal sort of bundle and then we'll be able to plant these ones back up again. I'll just put these back in the space. There we go. And as well with these pouches, you don't always have to go into the inventory to transfer them across. Let's say you've been out in the world and you've collected up all these little bits and pieces. You're happy with them and you want to just drop them off where you're keeping your flowers, wherever that may be. You can just go up to a chest, crouch and then right click. And if you have a look in the chest, you'll find that all of those flowers have transferred over. They've come out of the pouch and it is emptied for you. 
So we've got our flowers, we've got our little starter place, which is a little bit on the older rough and ready side at the moment, and we've also got a pouch in order to store our flowers in. But what was the use for all of this? Why have we gone out and collected up all of these flowers? What are we actually going to do with them? Well, if we come into JEI, which is another mod that's well worth having attached onto any other mods you might be using, what we can do is we can type in generating, and that will bring up all of the generating flowers. These are ones that are going to make mana for us, which is what we're going to use to power the more powerful flowers that do functional nice tasks for us. But these are going to be the next stage for us. So what we're going to do, if I come over here then, so Hydroanger is one of the cheapest, most readily available flowers to make first, and I click on that one, it'll bring up a recipe. So there he is, there's the Hydroanger that we're going to be making, and this is what you use to make it. Blue petals and cyan petals. Aha, the reason for the flowers suddenly becomes more important. And as you click through these, you can see which different colours of petals these generating flowers are going to be using. So we can see that one's going to be using purple and pink and lime. That one's going to be using some red and some grey and some white. And all of the different ones use some kind of different colour of petal and they get steadily more and more expensive. So effectively what we've got here is the basic ingredients for the mod. These mystical flowers that we find out in the world, these are the first ones that you get. You can't do anything with them at this stage, they've got no functional use, but they're going to be useful in making the more important flowers the ones that can do jobs for us. And in order to get started with turning our petals into more important flowers, the first thing we're going to need, or possibly the most important thing you're going to need, is going to be a petal apothecary, which is made using some kind of stone and a petal. Everything always uses a petal. So if we come over here into the crafting bench, I'll bring up everything I can actually make. There we go, it is already showing me the petal apothecary just there. You can see that it's going to be using six pieces of cobble and one little petal. If I come back into the JEI side, it just shows you over here all of the different types and colours of apothecaries that you can make. They all function in the same way, they're just made out of slightly different blocks to give them a different decorative look. For now though, I am going to stick with the normal cobble one, because I've only got cobble available to me. That is the cheapest, that's the one we'll start off with, and we'll get fancier ones as we go through the mod. So, little petal apothecary, if I pop you down just there, you kind of blend in with my floor, you're going to need to have your own place to live. But this is going to be useful for blending up all of those different petals in order to make the fancy flowers. And the only other thing we are going to make before we start is I want to make a book. That is because, like a lot of other mods, Batania does give you some help, he does give you a book to get you started, so I'm just going to come over here and grab some sugarcane. I'm going to grab some leather out from there. I'm going to make myself a book quickly. Give me a book. And then I can combine that book with a sapling of any type, and that is going to give me the Lexica Botanica. And this contains all of the basic information that you need in order to get started with the Botania mod. If I open that one up, we can see it's got basics and mechanics, the apparatus, all of the items and everything that we can work through, and you go through them in stages, starting with the basics, of course. Oh, there we go. There's our little flower pouch that we've already made. And there you go, though. That is not a bad little start. We have got all of the flowers, so we're ready to go. We've got our apothecary, and we have got a book, just in case we need to have any extra help. Hello, what are you doing in with my animals? Oh, I love those guys, I'm so glad they're in the game. But yes, I am happy with the start we have made, and you know what? I think one of the first things I'm actually going to create is a flower that kills you guys off. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? For now though, I am going to bid you adieu, and I will see you again for the next episode when we will get started with making our first generating flowers. So, happy Minecrafting everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!